Once your edit on demand system has finished deploying, it's time to start configuring the users and the Nexus workspaces. To do this, go to your My Avid account and under the My Products section, click on the link that says Avid Edit On Demand Portal. This will take you to the portal for managing your existing Edit On Demand subscriptions. The first page you will see is the My Bill page, but the page we are interested in today is the Edit page. This is where all the details for accessing your subscriptions are kept and also where we can add users into the system. Under the Users tab, you will see all of your subscriptions either currently active like the two we created in the previous video or previous subscriptions which have now been cancelled. Notice that each of the subscriptions automatically has a user created called WS Admin. This is the Workspace Administrator user you will use to administer the Nexus workspaces shortly. But first, let's add some additional user accounts. We can add multiple users to the system in one go. So first let's add myself Danny and then also add my colleague Claudia who I will be collaborating with as part of this project. It takes a little bit of time for the users to become active as it is deploying the user across all of the available clients and the Nexus system in a completely automated fashion. You only need to create a user once and it is available everywhere. Once the users have been created, they will show a green active status. You can delete individual users by clicking on the bin icon or reset their passwords by clicking the reset arrow. You can also initiate these actions against a selection of users. To do this, click the selection boxes for the users you want to affect and then select the appropriate action from the drop down menu. Every user has a one time password that is automatically generated for their first time accessing the system. Click on the show button to reveal this password. Users are forced to change this on their first login. Next, let's look at the system tab. This gives you an overview of the relevant links for accessing your system. The remote desktop installers link takes you to the PC over IP installers for Windows, Mac and Linux. This is the software you will use to access your available media composers. We're going to access a media composer soon in order to configure our Nexus workspaces. So let's go ahead and download the client. We will then run the installer to install it onto our local machine. Once installed, run the PC over IP client. Click on the new connection button and now we will copy the remote desktop host address and paste it into the relevant field in the client. Add a logical connection name for you to be able to identify the system easily, as you might have multiple connections eventually set up inside your PCOIP client. Click next, and then you will need to add a username and password. As we're going to administer our Nexus storage, let's use the WS admin user. Type the username and then copy the relevant one-time password from the users tab. You will get a warning letting you know the one-time password must be changed in order to continue. Paste in the old password and then type in a new secure password into the relevant fields. Click done and you will see a number of available media composer seats depending on what you currently have deployed into your subscription. Notice they both say stopped. This means the virtual machines are currently off. To start them, we simply need to connect and they will start automatically. We will cover the other possible virtual machine states in our next video. Once the machine boots up, you will arrive at the desktop of your Media Composer. We are, however, not going to open Media Composer right now. Instead, we want to administer the Nexus to make it ready and available for the other users on our system. Open the system tray and click on the Nexus Client Manager icon. From here, you can open the management console, sign into the management console with your WS admin user credentials. This is the Nexus dashboard. From here, we can get an overview of our Nexus storage, including which clients are currently connected and using it, how much bandwidth is being consumed by those clients, and the current total allocated and used storage. Next, Click on the Workspaces tab to manage the workspaces. By default, each Nexus instance you deploy 
will have a single generic workspace called Avid Workspace. We can see this workspace has one terabyte allocated to it and our system has a maximum total capacity of two terabytes. This is based on the service credits we deployed previously. If you need more storage capacity, you can utilize more credits at any time. If you double click the workspace, it will reveal more information about it. From here, we can change the workspace name, its capacity, and also administer the rights for the different users. One of the many great things about the Nexus file system is that we can dynamically scale workspaces up or down in size on the fly. Let's make this workspace 500 gigabytes. Notice my remaining available storage is now up to 75% in an instant. What if you want to add a new workspace? Simply click the plus icon at the top of the admin page. Give your new workspace a name, set the capacity required, and enable the appropriate users either read, read write, or no access to the workspace. By default, a new workspace will be set to no access for all users to stop unwanted user accounts gaining access until it has been specifically allocated to them. Once you are happy with the details of your initial Nexus configuration, it might be the right time to start inviting your users to access the system. Simply copy and send them the relevant details from the system tab in the edit on demand portal and also their username and one time password. In the next video, we will look at how a user will access a media composer and upload content to the appropriate workspace.